Hello everyone. Um, I want to tell you a little, little bit more about this uh, awesome Microsoft initiative, AI for Good. Uh, who heard about this uh, initiative of Microsoft already? Yeah, a couple of you, yeah. So, uh, and I believe we as developers, uh, I see there are not so many people, hopefully there are also some developers uh, attending today. Who's developer? Okay, great. So, there are some of you. And, uh, and I believe uh, we as developers, we can improve the life of, uh, of the people, especially people in need. Um, and especially in underdeveloped areas. AI is a, a significant engine to uh, empower sustainable uh, ways as well. So, uh, and as you know, Satya, he's uh, um, changed Microsoft a lot. Uh, so we changed now to empower more people and organizations. And today I want to focus more how we can um, um, empower people here and um, as you know for some uh, problems there are easy solutions like recycle your trash or avoid packaging but for more complex problems um, there are no obviously answers um, so Microsoft believe AI can help to solve these uh, complex solutions um, so for example um, Azure um, computer API, uh, these cognitive services, uh, this vision, computer vision API can help to separate, for example, the trash. And uh, today we only recycle 30% of the trash um, and the rest we burn and we ship to the developed countries. So um, in this case, um, I think I can motivate you today to participate in this uh, initiative. Um, some words about me. Um, I'm a cloud solution architect in Germany um, for retail and logistics. I work together already with Plain Concepts with some customers in Germany. Um, so they invite me here. Thank you so much. Um, and um, I'm um, specialized in IoT and AI. And uh, I love to make uh, hackathons to show uh, what is feasible with Microsoft technologies. Um, and I also volunteering in a refugee program, uh, ReadySchool.org, and I also volunteering in a kids program, Code Your Life. So we help to um, helping kids to learn uh, programming languages. And I also um, helping um, this program, AI for Earth, AI for Good, um, and supporting them on a technical level. Yeah, um, as you know, um, who knows that we had a parity 2016 of uh, object recognition? Yeah, no? So I think we, we make a lot of progress because we built in all these AI technologies in our products like Office 365 and, uh, and Cortana. And we also 2017 reached uh, human parity with speech recognition. Last year we reached uh, human parity with machine translation and, uh, and also of the machine understanding uh, reading. So um, it's, it's a big step for us. And uh, we believe we can do much more because uh, we learn every day new things. Uh, for example, in Office 365, um, we have 180 um, million active users using AI today. Um, we have Cortana um, in Windows 10. They are, they are 18 billion uh, per month. And with our defense operation uh, centers worldwide, who knows these centers from Microsoft, these cybersecurity centers? So they are all over the place. So we have three uh, in three areas. Um, um, so we get 6.5 trillion messages and signals we have to um, um, analyze with machine learning as well. So now uh, with Azure uh, Sentinel, we are uh, a full security uh, event management system 
Um, so we also can help big companies for security issues with this uh, knowledge we have today. Um, we, have, we have with AI for Good um, a, f a commitment of uh, $115 million um, for projects in these three areas. So we have one area, as you see, AI for accessibility uh, to help people with um, disabilities. We have uh, AI for Earth, it's another program with $50 million uh, commitment for agriculture, biodiversity, climate change and water. And the third is AI for humanitarian action. And there are also new, two new are coming um, for cultural heritage and AI for health. So um, um, this is a three year, four year programs. So uh, we have that them already uh, since two years. So in AI for accessibility, uh, maybe you know that already, we, we hire a lot of uh, people with disabilities because uh, we think if these programmers with disabilities um, programming uh, these user interfaces as they can do um, or they can use um, they program much better user interfaces because uh, they have to use them so um, this is one step ahead and then our modern tool modern lifecycle tools like Office 365 uh, and also uh, mobile tools they are um, they are used for the daily life, for, for the whole day, how they can help. And uh, we have communication tools like Microsoft Teams. Um, so we modernize these communication tools for listen, speak and write, um, and not, on, not only for reading as well. Um, so we had three um, projects here, Seeing AI are coming uh, to that we have help picto and there's also an app uh, for nonverbal children uh, so they can get speech to text and so when they're speaking so we generate these sentences uh, bringing an icon up or an image so they see get feedback if it's understandable what, what they are talking about and it helps uh, children for their development and who using Microsoft Translator as app already? Not so many. Who's using, for example, Google Translator? Ah, okay. <laughs> I did it before as well. Now I'm evangelate. <laughs> and uh, it's awesome what you are doing now, what you can do with the app. Uh, download the app and try it. And it's much better than Google now. I'm, I'm worried. Uh, it's, it's very good. Um, especially if you are uh, in a room with many people, we recognize the speaker and uh, we show who is speaking what and it can help a lot uh, to, to recognize also for blind people who is speaking and this is really good. So um, one featured project I want to show you next is designed for blind uh, people and low vision people. So you can use your phone and for example, I can hold it here and uh, count the people, say uh, so many females and males are there, they are smiling, the most of the people smiling or not smiling. So people, uh, they are blind, they get a very quick, a rough understanding what's going on. So I can show you next how it looks like. The it's an online video, but it should work. Seeing AI is a Microsoft research project for people with visual impairments. The app narrates the world around you by turning the visual world into an audible experience. Point your phone's camera, select a channel, and hear a description. The app recognizes saved friends. Jenny near top right, three feet away. Describes the people around you, including their emotions. 28 year old female wearing glasses looking happy. It reads text out loud as it comes into view, like on an envelope, Ken Lawrence, P.O. Box, or a room entrance. Conference 2005. 
or scan and read documents like books and letters. The app will guide you and recognize the text with its formatting. Top and left edge is not visible. Hold steady. Lease agreement. This agreement exists. When paying with cash, the app identifies currency bills. 20 US dollars. When looking for something in your pantry or at the store, use the barcode scanner with audio cues to help you find what you want. Campbell's tomato soup. When available, hear additional product details. Heat in microwave full on height. And even hear descriptions of images in other apps like Twitter by importing them into Seeing AI. A close up of Bill Gates. Finally, explore our experimental features like scene descriptions to get a glimpse of the future. I think it's a young girl throwing a frisbee in the park. Experience the world around you with the Seeing AI app from Microsoft. So what do you think? Is this good? For people? We, we, yeah. So um, that make a lot of progress. I tried that out uh, a couple of days ago. And you also can store all your friends and colleagues. And then can, if you make a picture, let's say five of your friends are in the room, um, and who is it? So it's very, very helpful um, to get the scenery. Um, ah. yep. So another uh, initiative we have is AI for Earth. Um, so it uh, addresses uh, four different areas. Uh, it's first uh, agriculture, um, so people need to eat uh, the feed for the world's rapidly grow population. Uh, farmers must produce more food. Um, farmers must produce uh, as well. So, um, but we have not so much land anymore. So uh, with a low environmental impact, uh, we can help with AI uh, to efficiently monitor the conditions for the farmers. And uh, another thing is water. Um, so we, um, we monitor and protect species uh, for their uh, extinction. And uh, the fourth point is the climate change. So here um, we have some projects already, like WildMe. So we, we track all the people, uh, all the, the animals uh, with, a, with a crowd. Uh, with Silver Terra, we mapping the future of our forests with machine learning, and we also have land cover mapping. And there's also an API available for the land cover mapping, with a density or accuracy of uh, one meter. That's really good also for the farmers. And uh, with Farm Beats, we developed uh, sensors and drones uh, to also track a uh, data-driven uh, sustainability. So uh, very clear uh, that uh, sometimes Microsoft, sometimes it is a, a partner. So if you have an idea in this area, you can register for these things, uh, for your idea, and you get uh, funding for, for your project. Um, then uh, you have pre project pre-motion and iNaturalist. Um, I think the, the next one is very interesting. Um, so we catch mosquitoes with these devices um, and they are used as a field biologist to analyze 100,000 uh, blood samples from humans and animals. And usually it takes three months for the DNA test. And we do it in 12 minutes, these 100,000 uh, uh, sample, uh, sample analy analyzation of the DNA. So there are two points uh, we want to address uh, with that. At first, um, we want to analyze diseases and also find the root cause, where it's happened at first time. And then because mosquitoes, they are also biting animals. So we get DNA uh, from animals as well. So in this case, um, we can see biodiversity. And then we see also um, where we have to protect uh, these animals. Um, another program is AI for humanitarian. So we want to uh, go into disaster response cases, uh, the needs of children, refugees and displaced people, and human rights. Um, here we have 
We work together with, with partners like in disaster response with the World Bank and uh, the United Nations. And um, for the need of the children, we have Operation Smile. And uh, for refugees and displaced children, we work with NetHope and, for example, with the Norwegian uh, Refugee Council. Um, here's a very impressive thing, uh, op Operation Smile. They provided more than 21,000 uh, patients with a solution. So we they make a picture and then AI detects uh, these um, this lip, lip cleft um, um, every three minutes um, a children was is born with these lip clefts and in, in the western countries it is not a problem anymore it's just a very quick surgery but in, s in developed countries um, they are not get a surgery but it's very bad if you don't do it in, a, in the same time uh, it's very bad uh, if you have a later surgery. You will see that uh, in, in your face. And also, you need to ask dentists what you can do. So in this case, um, this AI solution helps to, to detect this and also make recommendations uh, for the doctors. Um, I want to give you some lessons learned from the last two years, AI for good, and as well, from our Earth Lab in Berlin. We had that in uh, February 2019. Um, so we had um, around, or we developed around 100 ideas um, uh, on the first day. And on the second day, we developed 10 ideas, or we scope on 10 ideas, and five of these ideas are now in the AI for Earth program. So we do it not alone, we do it with uh, Fraunhofer together, and uh, with all these uh, awesome people. Um, so I can come uh, to these um, ideas, Breeze Technologies, they developed sensors um, for, for outside areas, cheap sensors, um, and airflow, for example. They are using these sensors and combine these with satellite information. Um, and uh, the good one is you get this neutron oxygen or ozone or fine dust inf information and if uh, you want to have um, if you want to calculate your run running route um, we get this information how much uh, pollution is on the way so you can decide which route you want to you want to run another thing is um, uh, Shazam for nature, um, and this is like uh, you can listen on your phone. Uh, is a bird is singing, and then uh, he's saying uh, this is, for example, the specific bird. Um, so it's also good for teaching kids and also adults <laughs> uh, because um, uh, it helps you also if you record these uh, to understand the, the nature and. Um, and uh, biologics, biologists uh, can use this information uh, because we get this GPS information as well. So where we can, uh, where the, this is recorded. Roadmap monitor is a solution where we uh, uh, developed uh, in developed countries and remote sites. So we don't know uh, these new roads, what's built and uh, so we can record and define these, um, what's say, illegal roads. So we can see, for example, in Borneo, um, is there some new roads uh, happen? Um, so we can um, estimate what is the problem uh, in the rainforest. WeB is a very interesting project as well because uh, WeB is uh, make a sensor in the hive. Sorry, I was too. Wait, was too much? Yeah, no. Um, so they have sensors in the hive, so they record all these on the entrance of the hive, um, which bees come in and out when it's raining and so on, and we understand more about the behavior of, of the bees then. 
Um, so some best practices. Um, you will find the best solution if you are directly affected. That's clear. Um, um, and then the next um, example, my colleague Juan, he lost his son when he was one year old uh, on a um, sudden infant death syndrome. Do you know that? There's many, many kids dying and we don't know why. And here they collect all the DNA from the, from the children they are affected and um, put the environment um, parameters on top of that. So I want to show you a video. Every year, over 3,500 infants die of SIDS-related causes in the U.S. alone. My son Aaron was one of them. Data scientists on the Microsoft Genomics team took publicly available CDC data, 26 million births and deaths, and ran Microsoft AI on it. They discovered six correlations that showed statistical increases in SIDS. And then we went to Seattle Children's with their world-class medical researchers. We identify genetic contributions to pediatric disorders. John's data told us there are clues that are definitely worth pursuing. You have to bring everything together on the molecular level, genetic level, and big data level that gave us hope. We've been working together to create a genomic database that will identify many new genetic risk factors and new genes and pathways that can underlie SIDS. Through his DNA, my son Aaron is the first child in this database. We can very efficiently perform genome sequencing. The challenge is often interpreting it. Microsoft AI is extremely instrumental. We can analyze the data in a massive scale and look at signals that emerge. Now we have million more hypotheses that we haven't even thought of. Our goal is to recognize SIDS early and prevent it from happening. This database allows us to share our results and collaborate with our peers anywhere in the world. SIDS is the unknown. That's what makes this so challenging. The genomics database is empowering researchers on all new avenues of research. Our efforts will transform research for generations to come. I do believe we'll find answers. Yeah, I'm, um, uh, um, my daughter, she is uh, six. We have a diagnosis of uh, NF1, so she get uh, uh, tumors the next years, I guess. Um, so I'm affected here as well. So um, I'm currently speak with research institutes to, for collaboration as well. So um, in this case, uh, together with Microsoft and with this program, uh, we are helping here um, to, to go ahead in the research. So because what we can see if just uh, pharmacist co companies are doing this research, they're doing the research only for profit. If uh, you see, for example, the Parkinson community, they are really, really active. They have a lot of money because all the people, there's a lot of people affected from Parkinson. They put a lot of money into the research. Um, and um, so what we see here, if people are affected from diseases, they are very, very motivated to solve these issues. Um, it's a long time until we, we fix that. But um, finally, I think we, we get a lot of uh, results as well, as you can see here with Aaron and Juan. And the next thing, lesson learned, we see here is uh, the power of community. As I mentioned, um, many of these um, ideas uh, we drive in, in uh, AI for good, that's communities behind that. For example, the next one, what I want to show you is wildbook.org. Um, so the users upload the pictures and, and the sound with the GPS information with their mobile and contribute to the system. And also the system themselves crawl for more information in a social uh, network. For example, in Twitter, in Facebook, in Instagram, and so on. And uh, they, they find these animals and where they are. Um, and also for the developers, you can use the most of the, um, these, these apps they are, because they are in GitHub already. 
uh, so that you can contribute to GitHub. You can fork these projects and use it for your own. Um, this is what we're doing here with whitebook.org as well because um, they have different types and species. Uh, so they need to uh, analyze with machine learning. So there are different machine learning uh, models in, uh, in the back background. I want to show you the next video. There are an estimated 90,000 threatened species across the globe. To understand what puts a species at risk, we need to know where are they born, how many survive, where do they go, how far do they go, how do they respond to different conditions. We really do need to learn about every individual animal. At Wildbook, we are using an algorithm to digitally tag individual animals, much like a human fingerprint. At Wildbook, anyone with a camera can become a citizen scientist, and anyone uploading animal photos or videos to social media directly contributes to conservation. Microsoft AI gives us the building blocks to analyze public streams of photos and videos and identify individual animals in an instant. So this is a new whale shark for science. Yes, and we named it Wilma. Wilma the whale shark. <laughs> AI can determine location, date of sighting, migration patterns, and even an animal's social group. And even if the information is not available, an intelligent agent can contact the contents owner and ask for the missing detail. Microsoft's AI for Good initiative gives us the technology to create a comprehensive view of the planet's biodiversity. In the last 10 years, we've identified 10 times more whale sharks than ever recorded in human history. By leveraging citizen scientists and bringing them together with researchers, we can form conservation policies. Microsoft AI will help us accelerate our work by empowering people to take action. What we get back is, wow, this is amazing. Cool, isn't it? So in two weeks' time, and two weeks' time, yeah, um, we have at Microsoft a hackathon in Germany. Uh, so uh, more than 1,500 employees are working on these social cases. So I'm um, um, a case owner for um, fruit trees. So finding the fruit trees uh, on the street, um, how much is the pollu pollution of the, uh, of the fruit as well. Uh, so we develop these and helping um, um, these social cases. So in this case, um, each idea gets 150 uh, 50 employees from, from Microsoft. And we work two days on this social case. So uh, that's our corporate events usually. Um, this is really cool, I guess. We are programming. We are also in the ideation phase in some things because we don't have, uh, not everyone is a programmer in our company. So, uh, so but everyone is helping here. Um, so maybe here are some, some insights of WhiteMe. As you can see, um, they, they know already the individual animals with this unique pattern and then uh, with this ima image capture they are uploading that to, to Facebook, to Twitter, to Instagram and then uh, and we analyze these things with, uh, with Microsoft Azure and then we go through uh, this machine learning and then we get more data where, uh, where what is the path of this animal and if it's an unknown animal we put that in a database and uh, the biologists, they also contact the person if they need some more information uh, about this animal. So um, another one is uh, use the latest uh, AI technologies. Uh, as you know, everyone knows cognitive services from, from Microsoft? No? Um, maybe I I take a look to the directory. I know we don't programming here. This may be the reason why not so many people coming. <laughs> uh, wait, I have to bring that here. 
So as you can see here, use, for example, the vision, uh, computer vision API. So you, as you can see, you get the image classification, um, the scene, uh, we have object recognition on the images, um, and also OCR and handwritten uh, as well. So, and we have video indexer, that's really, really cool. Uh, face recognition, if you have a crowd, you see uh, if it's, um, what, what is uh, the mood of the, of the crowd. Um, for example, we use this uh, um, a cognitive service for stadiums, for example, if there any um, panic is coming, so we get an alert very, very soon. Um, and we, you also can train models very easily with custom vision as well. So the same we have for speech, speech services uh, and speaker recognition, we're using for our services uh, in our software as a services as well, like Office 365 and so on. And uh, for the language, we have text analysis, we have uh, Bing spell check, we have language understanding, translator text and Q&A maker. And we also can uh, uh, make decisions and uh, the new thing do you know the anomaly detection who knows that as a uh, part of the stream analytics with the stream analytics you can uh, um, analyze over the time if you have anomalies uh, in your for example of of the behavior of your machine that's really uh, helpful as well and what quite a lot um, quite a lot customers are doing is uh, for example the Bing custom search and uh, and web search so for example a customer they have um, a list of suppliers and from time to time they have to check if they are still valid so every day they go through the list if they uh, suppliers are still uh, valid and where are the new addresses um, I, I know uh, Sometimes um, Bing didn't give you a 100% picture. What we are doing quite often is we combine these things. We combine Google uh, with, uh, with Azure, with other search engines, and then we get a better, better picture of that. Um, yeah, this is maybe some things to, to that. Um, with Azure Databricks, you can make experiments with machine learning. Who are using Databricks today? Not so many. So they, you have a Unipub uh, note uh, notebook. In this notebook, you put uh, your experiments, your data, um, you analyze your data. Um, but if your experiments are over, um, you have to think how you bring them to operation. And here also Azure can help you uh, with Azure Machine Learning Services and Azure uh, Machine Learning uh, uh, Operations or Ops to bring that in production as well. And these systems, they are working with nearly every machine learning uh, engine. Another thing that's very interesting is Project Brainwave. We developed uh, neural um, CPUs, as you can say. With these neural CPUs, that's, uh, you can have a deep learning uh, system. That's, it replaces uh, a whole cluster with one FPGA. So um, it's very interesting because they are, um, I think, 100 times faster than a, than a cluster and uh, also much cheaper. So I can show you next, next research. Um, oh, wait. This is not the right one. I only have to go to the next one. We've been talking with Microsoft about Project Brainwave. The early test result from Microsoft has shown FPGA is capable of predicting 550 images a second, comparing with a CPU cluster with 40 images a second. The potential for Project Brainwave is substantial. Very exciting. So it's still in preview, but you can use it already. So if you're using uh, machine learning and uh, custom vision API, you can choose if you run or run it on uh, on uh, virtu which virtual machine uh, with a GPU, uh, which because GPUs, uh, as you know, maybe 
that helps you uh, to calculate uh, float operations and uh, accelerate that. But they are very expensive as well because they have separate uh, graphic cards. And uh, with FPGAs, you are 10 times faster and they are cheaper. Um, but you have to check that, test that. Um, what is your model? Um, and if it's uh, faster and cheaper, take the FPGAs. So, and for example, if you have a project in AI for Good, you get the funding, Azure funding, um, I think up to 15,000 uh, euros for two years um, for your project. Um, you can use these um, AI technologies and also other technologies from Microsoft as well. Um, another thing I want to come is um, uh, use existing data. So for example, um, the European Union sent, uh, has their own um, satellite program with the ESA um, and they are the Sentinel pro uh, satellites. The newest one, uh, the 5P, gives you very accuracy, uh, accurate data. I think it was uh, one to three meters uh, of uh, the pollution, the methane, the carbon oxygen and so on. So you can get this information. You don't need sensors anymore outside. You can use these ones and you uh, get this information nearly every day um, and can use this data. Uh, another thing is we have quite often a lack of tagging, in s especially in urban areas. So I was very active uh, before an open street maps community. Um, this is crazy how many people tech things. Um, so they run around in their cities and um, check every lantern, for example, and put them in the maps. So they are much more accurate, for example, than, than Google Maps. Google is only interested uh, on, um, on commercial things and OpenStreetMaps is interested on every, everything. So that's very interesting as well. Um, Another thing is the land cover mapping from Microsoft. So we help here um, um, to, to improve um, the, the maps by the density of 10. Um, so it means um, it, it ma it's a very high effort to calculate uh, all these maps again and again. So if new satellite pictures are coming, you need a lot of computing power. Um, and in this case, my uh, Azure help here um, to calculate this um, every day and also uh, bring these pictures together with a high density. I can show you the next video. I've been a waterman on the Chesapeake Bay since 1995. When you're out there on the water every day for that long, you see how things have changed. It's hard knowing there's nothing you can do but watch. My name is Bob Ingersoll, and I'm a farmer. The demand for our kind of work is only going up, and we're constantly looking at how to expand our yield without stripping the land or polluting the bay. The Chesapeake Conservancy has been focused on creating tools that help answer some of these questions. In the infancy of the Chesapeake Bay program, Scientists built a scale physical model of the bay to understand how processes worked and to simulate potential solutions. A lot has changed since then, and technology has been the catalyst. The Chesapeake Conservancy has been a pioneer in the field of precision conservation, getting the right practices in the right places, but it hasn't always been easy. Until recently, land cover data was only available at 30 meters resolution and represented what the landscape looked like seven years ago. Not great for precision planning. We raised the support and spent 18 months working with our partners to create a one meter land cover database for the Chesapeake Bay program. This unprecedented project took a lot of effort and massive computing power. Now we are working with Microsoft and using AI and deep learning to accelerate our work both in the Chesapeake and across the country. Our collaboration is aimed at providing partners with the information they need to make informed decisions. 
the Microsoft Cloud is freeing up organizations to spend less time on technology and more time on conservation. Working with a conservancy, I am now able to restore and protect my lands with the same level of precision that I grow my crops. This allows me to focus on what I need to do, provide food for people while sustaining the land and the bay. I love this water. I love this work. It's a special place out here, and it's up to us to protect it. So uh, we're offering farmers and um, also projects an, an API, a public API. So you can request on the homepage you saw before uh, the API key. You have to request the API key and uh, we will send you the API key if you need that. So um, another lesson learned uh, is uh, use public funding. It's amazing how much public funding is out there. Um, for example, the, green, uh, the Global Green Climate Fund, you have 5 billion euros. Um, you can, um, don't do it alone, do it with a research institute, with universities with NGOs, with communities and cities. So usually they have a, a lot of experience to get this money and you can collaborate uh, with it. Um, you will find on these websites, Climate Fund, uh, EC Europe and Climate Schutz is a German one, um, this call for proposals. Um, they have uh, already um, problems to address. So you need to find the right problem for of your solution in these uh, databases, and then you can start. Um, another thing I'm already involved as well was a, a European research and development uh, program, Horizon 2020. It's a 77 billion euro funding um, for health, for cybersecurity, um, for climate, and so on. So. Um, this is uh, really good as well. It's sometimes it's not easy because um, you have to come with a research group um, that's uh, from different com co uh, countries. Um, if you come from uh, Spain, you have a higher chance sometimes uh, as uh, you come from Germany. The best is you bring in many research and communities together and research on that. Uh, another thing, and it's much more easier to get this funding is uh, local climate funds. For example, in Germany, we have this Klimaschutz.de. Uh, it's a local climate fund of 900 million euros. So it's quite easy to get this. So um, we can provide Azure funding, but um, ask Microsoft, for example, for, for a letter of intent. Um, to, to get this public funding as well. So if you have technology companies in your bag, they are also very interested. Uh, you get a higher chance to get funding uh, from these different uh, funding programs as well. Um, and my experience from the refugee uh, console um, is uh, with these voluntary engagements that open new doors for me. Um, this Ready School, for example, we have IoT courses together with Bosch, SAP, Cisco, Fraunhofer, and it's awesome. Um, it's so easy now to, to get in contact with, uh, with these people and this organization, and it's building bridges. Uh, they are also helping me in business now. So it is, uh, if uh, you, I would say, wouldn't say building sustainable partnerships, you also building sustainable friendships as well. Um, so because you're helping each other in these cases, you're also helping you uh, in business as well. So it's helping me a lot. Um, so if you have an idea, go to uh, aka.ms AI for good. Um, so you can uh, register your idea and propose for a grandee. Uh, my presentation you'll find at uh, aka.ms.net uh, 2019 AI for Good. Thank you so much.
Any questions? No? <laughs> uh, who's, who's interested at all to that program? Who has an idea or uh, think he, he would uh, participate? No one? Yeah? Yeah? I would like to know any project of uh, this kind of things here in Spain? Yeah, I can give you later uh, the local representative for Spain, for Microsoft. I also can put that uh, here. And as you can see, there's a map, mm -hmm. should open here, a map of, uh, oops, again. So there are some I saw from in Spain, ah, here, oops, there was a map of projects, oops, I think there are uh, here maybe more about maybe here I, I saw somewhere this uh, this list of all projects I think here mm -hmm. I have no I know we have some projects uh, with a map so I saw them I can find it out uh, it should be somewhere on the on the website, okay. yeah. But I know there are one or two projects. One yeah. or two. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Not so many. So it would be great if we can uh, uh, coordinate uh, such an event like uh, in Germany, um, AI uh, for Earth here in Spain. Um, so if there are some interesting person, we can uh, work with uh, research institutes and universities together. Yeah. Other questions? Ah, okay. I didn't have the time to read. Ah, it's a Power BI app. <coughs> so, project location Spain. Come on. It's coming, it's coming, yeah, yeah. Only one. So we, 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 should, we should do something. <laughs> so if you see others, um, there are more. So um, I think you have a, pro what a problem here as well. So it could be also, I think it's also a water here, water project. So yeah. Okay, other questions? Yes, why not having a specific category for sanitary projects? Because it's about earth and all these type of things, but you have told us about some related with diseases. Oh, I, you have to ask the program manager. <laughs> <laughs> it's curious because with diseases, there are a lot of data that can be exploited. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's part of the AI for earth. Uh, you can stretch it. So <laughs> if you have a good idea, we try to put that, uh, if it's a really good idea, we put that in some of that, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Other question? Yeah, so thank you, thanks a lot, and uh, have a good day.